quick cinema 4D hacks. I have two small tools which are very similar um, and working with the same process and approach. So I have here the possibilities to first show you masking in cinema 4D, um, video masking or some masking out, some picture masking to create a mask for a picture or to rotoscope, yeah, simply to say. Um, simple set, I don't know the English words for that. I'm so bad, my English is so terrible. So let's jump over to the user lib and load in my, go to build and load in this garbage mod. In this case, it's called a garbage mod, but it's the rotoscoper or mask tool. Let's call it mask tool. And there's already a, a picture on it, so it's, it uses the camera projection. You can't move the camera around. It's have a projection tag. So to work with, you have to go into the camera view. But if you want to zoom more closely, then you have to choose the front view and then you can zoom a little bit closer. So we have to have your small interface. We load in a picture here. Simply this picture here it's a little bit warped and stretched and not the right dimensions I work on it but at the moment this works so here we have to load in a spline so first we can directly start to paint a spline here so here I create now my mask as you know it from After Effects and so forth and try to really quick mask this thing out I recommend if you want to feather the mask please draw a little bit inside of the model so now later you have the possibilities to feather it a little bit out just for demonstration I draw a little bit more inside the model but you can also draw exactly when you want hard edges and so on harsh edges sorry in Germany harsh means as no sorry this was such fun so I've masked it a little quickly so I mask a little bit inside because I want to feather it a little bit to show you later the effect so now I fear this thing make it hard put it a little bit inside also these guys So go go to the spline mask tool and drag and drop the spline inside and turn on mask. Now you can see it's perfectly masked out, not perfectly, but now you can also here increase the mask a little bit. Yeah, so you can come back here to the original thing. See it, you can stretch it a little bit the mask. You can't decrease it, you just have the ability to increase it. And also you can use here this feather tool. So now you can feather it a little bit out. The mask. I don't know what you see, it's it's a little bit blurred. So you can but it's limitation. It's limit it's with some limitation, yes. So yeah. A little bit of feather maybe more anti-laced, a little bit anti-laced. You'll see it's not too, when you don't turn it on, it's very harsh. And now with feather, it, it looks a little bit, a little bit more, yeah, smooth. So this is the first thing. With that thing you also can, and now you can render it out uh, you can use this mask in your project, maybe in 2.5D um, compositing things, a small mountain very quick, um, mask a small mountain out or another thing and then yeah, use it in your composition. Also you can now make this editable yeah, and now you can create here because you can't move this thing because it's camera projected. Yeah. So first you have to convert it, uh, you have to create a UV map and instantly he 
writes the UV data in it and now you can turn it on, delete this mask tool and now you can turn this wherever you want. Also the spline, you can make the spline invisible or group it, but the spline has to be inside this project here. So on this, another, uh, otherwise it is gone. Yeah, so let's jump back to this. And also you can do some, maybe you can do some, uh, yeah, video masking also. So this also works with, um, with uh, movies and you can animate your spline so you can rotoscope. So also you can make some video transitions. Maybe you choose a spline here, make it a little bit bigger and now put the spline into the spline thing and turn it on and now you can make some um you can animate here the spline hey what's going on here ah no it doesn't work you have to the spline doesn't work you have to the spline has to be in the center you have to make it editable the spline mask as you know it from after effects and then you have to animate the spline path so now when I run and now I can you see you can make some video transitions here with splines so this would be yeah some ideas maybe can make this such a things so also yeah um, yeah and also it works also with movies yeah I don't have a small maybe I have a small movie here I shortly look if I have a short client movie maybe which I can use now I have here client movie which I can use well what can I use what can I use no fiber and nave Oh, let's lose, lose, use this thing here. Um, yeah, let's choose this movie here. Um, activate here. So this is the movie for a client I created here. So the first thing you have to go into animation here and choose here, um, animate view and also you have to go inside of the color channel and animation and calculate the animation so now we you can see here the animation what i've created here a cool thing um so now you you could mask it out let's demonstrate here small on this turbines uh, of course, these turbines are uh, not. Um, it's just a fake chrome material. It looks better than the original chrome. So I simply go here inside and create a spline mask here. The roll here, maybe like this. A few spline points. Yeah, it's just it's a lot of work. The less spline points you have. The better it is. So make here some small spline like this. Just as you know it from Photoshop. So I delete this guy here and make this smooth. Go and add it and make this a little bit like this. So now I turn put the spline into the thing and mask it out. You see it's masked out. A little feather, I turn it off. And now I tur let this turned on and now I can uh, here quickly animate here the spline. So I need to check here PLA and now I can animate the spline. So I make here a uh, keyframe here on the spline. Don't choose this. 
uh, make a keyframe here. And now uh, watch the movie, go a little bit for war. <laughs> and now I have to just animate this uh, mask. So it's not automatic masking here, so like this. I turn on auto keyframe. Then I, there's another thing here. And also this point a little bit. Like this. I don't know if he is also animating the tangent, tensions. I don't know. I never tried it before. So now I go to the next frame. A quick rotoscoping. So when Cinema 4D would add a small feather or blur tool for these things, for the spline shader, we would have a perfect rotoscope thing in Cinema 4D. I think Cinema 4D should go a little bit more in composing as Blender goes. And now, choose everything, like here. Yeah, it's not perfect, yeah, it's, I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work, <laughs> probably. What is this? There's also a point. Oh, it's not close, this is, it's not good. some mistakes you have to work more precise this is of course yeah so now here and also here then next frame go E and then you can choose here more this uh, tweaking modus Yeah, not really perfect, I know. But dudes, it's just for fun here. Some simple things. And the last one. Quick rotoscoping in Cinema 4D. Never seen before. So that's it, I'm done and turn off this auto key thing and look at that, we have rotoscoped the engine, here we can do some improvements, I'm not pretty happy with that. Why is this so, looks not really cool. Yeah, yeah we've rotoscoped it. Yeah, we also have some, I have, what I've done here, man. Why is it going outside? Hey, where's the other one? Is 
this hard? No. Ah, there's the other one here. Alright. Whatever. Shit. What the what the heck? Doesn't work in this case. So yeah. It's just a small rotoscope thing here, nothing fancy, man. Yeah. But you know, you know the idea, what I mean, yeah. So let's jump here and see our mask, what we've created. So it's not really, it's also warped everything. So we created here an animated mask, look at this. And now we can rotoscope here. I turn on this mask now. Look at that. And we've rotoscoped our engine. <laughs> right away in Symphony. What the fuck? Isn't it cool? Look at that. And also we can increase the mass, of course. And we also can feather it a little bit out to get rid of this war of uh, this harsh edges. And look at this. And now we can render it out, man. We can render it out every picture with mass. Also the alpha channel. And hit render. So I don't know if this works. No, yeah, but, so. but look at this. Rotoscoping right away in Cinema 4D with <laughs> It's possible. It's really possible. So I hope that that a blur effect comes into this um, node materials. This would be a nice thing. So we could be able to blur these things out. So now I've created here the rotoscope, motherfucker. Isn't it fantastic? Look at this amazing feature. And also we have an alpha channel. <laughs> Cinema 4D is now a compositor. What the heck is that? So I want to texture it. So I, no, I first want to show you another thing here. Another new project, the interface maker. So this is this tool. You, it's pretty the same or similar. Um, um, approach as as you we have seen here and with the garbage matter. So with this thing you can create small interfaces. So it's here the interface tool just with a small interface. The width and the height, alpha, background color, outline color, outline thickness, outline feather, and fill color. So every so it's in the on the x y plane. So when you were have to work, everything has to be in the center. So it's a little bit in front yeah, for, for the another thing what I want to show you later. So first of all, you have to work in front view. Then you can create an, 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 an maybe a spline, square spline maybe. Yeah. And put it inside. Everything which is inside this frame is rendered. So <clears throat> now I put this um, square inside the spline mask and you have to update here with this, with the timeline. And in the you see here the thing here. You can turn alpha on off. So now you can choose here also in the background color maybe and also an outline color. And also you can choose here the fill color. Now maybe here, something like this. And also you can here the outline thickness. Yeah. And you hit render, you see we have small shapes here. And you can also create a text here, maybe HUD. Yeah. 
for example, sorry. Then you put this inside this guy here and put it inside this blind mask. Update and you see here in the here this. You can create a small comic look stylized um, interfaces very quickly in Cinema 4D. Everything which is out of the frame isn't rendered, you see? This is very cool. You can also make here so some animation, text animations or something inside the texture. And this material you also can project on another material. So maybe let's try this. Um, you have your cube and put this material on it. You see, and when you now animate here this text, it also <laughs> shows on the cube. So you can create here 2D animated textures, simple textures or something, yeah, right away out of Cinema 4D. You don't have to use um, geometry or generators. You can make it simply with splines, yeah. So now you have created here your interface maybe. Yeah, or something like this, or yeah, and then you can render it as texture. Have your texture make it type in the texture dimensions, maybe 48, 2048, and now you are able to render it out. When you choose PNG, then he renders out the alpha channel and the color channel in this case, but I choose always um, PSD and choose one file then he renders out um, the alpha mask, uh, the alpha layer and the color layer in one texture, in one PSD file as separate layers. So let's make this very quickly, uh, everything here chosen, and I bake it. So it took a little bit time uh, it doesn't work, he has no alpha channel because I don't activate it. He just have a color. So this is the color texture which he is rendered out. So I turn on here very quick um, alpha. So he has transparency now. So don't, it looks like that. And now I can bake it with alpha. And now he bakes the color texture and also the alpha channel, yeah. Looks a little bit dark. I don't know why this is so. Yeah. Um, also, we can hear, of course, the outline thickness, feathering a little bit. So when you feather it out, choose everything the same color. Then you have here some, some uh, blur effect a little bit. Yeah, you can make some animations maybe. You can animate this parameter like so. Uh, yeah, and now you've ran it out. So, and also what you can do with this thing is you can texture, you can use it for texturing, yeah. So let's jump over to the vehicle. Well, let's bring this guy over here. So C and vehicle way. So now we have it here. So I want to texture here this part of the vehicle. To do this, I quickly have to go into the layout. So maybe it works now. No. And as you can see, we have here the military vehicle. Uh, maybe I should restart later again. So if you have this, re uh, these are the texture maps and we have here roughness, all these maps under here in the color channel now. And I have here my DK's um, layer uh, setment, uh, set here. I want to have your alpha channel, you know, it can some burn edges here. And I want to create here a shape. We have no possibilities to vector paint here in Cinema 4D in, in body paint. I, I miss this function. So we also can just uh, uh, model a few 
So when I create a new layer, we just can create simple shapes here with stars, rectangular or squares and something like that. For some things, it's very good enough for interface making some small shapes is very cool. And also we can use brushes, but to find the according brush to that what we are searching is, is very difficult. So I want to paint, yeah, with with splines or with vectors to this part of textual. It's very simple. The thing I have to do now is I have to load this texture into Cinema 4D. So I jump over to my to the layout here and bring in the the interface maker. Uh, this, this guy here. I delete the splines here. I turn this quickly off. And now I load in um, the texture. So I, I use my script. You also can download it from the website. It's just here, let's go to script, to uh, image plane. So you have to um, search for the texture now, on which you want to paint. In this case, it's a shop seven, CBD, vehicle one, and this is the color texture here. So we immediately loads in the texture. I make no scale to see it better. And now we have loaded in the texture here. And the interface maker is a little bit in front of the texture here so that we can now uh, see the spline where we are drawing. Now we're going to go into front view and create here. You have to create a spline here, activate spline mask and create here a, a shift press shift and empty spline, then it is inside the relative coordinates inside and it's also a little bit in front. So we, now we can see it or you draw and put it in and zero it out. Okay, um, now we take the spline pen and now I create quick a spline here. Like this, yeah. Uh, hard, smooth. Oh, this is okay. Okay, and now I, I update here, and now we have here outline color. I make this away. I make the same color here as the fill color, and the background color. I let black. I leave black, just for demonstration. Now. And now when I hit render, you see it's exactly on this place. Yeah. And now the only thing I have to also I have to mention that the interface maker has to be has to be got has got to be the same dimension as the image which I have on the plane. So it has in this case 204.8. So it's to work better with it instead of 2000. So now you can render it from the interface maker, choose PSD. Now in this case, one file and also the color. And now I hit bake. Sony bakes out the, he bakes out the alpha channel and also the color channel in one PSD file on separate layers. I jump over, so now it can happen that it, that it uh, crash. Cinema 4D crashes. Yeah, Cinema 4D crashes. Okay. Also, you make this editable, the texture. And now we are here in the DK tab here. I want to put another DK. So I just load the new texture. I append this texture. Now not load, I append it. Um, go into my desktop and import it. Oh, we have a problem here. So we have, we've made a mistake as we rendered it. We don't, we have just 200. Oh, this is the problem now, oh, yes. So I have to do the same step again. Sorry guys. I just want to show this. Dual image plane. So, uh, why isn't this in the right place here? <laughs> Always searching for this motherfucking image here. So, 
vehicle and a load in this texture, of course. And we quickly draw here our spline. Go in front view, draw our spline here. Oh, I see this is the problem now. You have to put the spline into the spline mass. Go here and zero it out. So now it should be in front of that. Oh, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> Just choose this way, spline. Sorry guys, <clears throat> shift and he's in it. So now I can draw here very quickly. Why is this so laggy? A thing here. So I've done, updated, um, same thing like this, let it lag like this. And now we, if when we want to render, we need the same texture size as the original texture. So we need 2008 and choose PSD, uh, file, alpha and color. And now we bake it. Yes. Now I delete this plane and this interface maker. Maybe also this guy's here, everything deleting. I hope now I can cha change the layout. Oh. So now we are here. And now I want to append my texture, not long. I want to append it. So I go in desktop, press and immediately e extract both the alpha and the color channel he created separate layers. Yeah, he's, this is the Photoshop file, this is very handy. And then we fit it's on the same place. And the only thing we have to do now is we have to go on the color and create another alpha channel or here layers new alpha channel. Select the alpha um, picture here, the alpha layer and go into the texture view and control A to select everything, control C to copy it, choose the alpha, um, the new alpha channel of the color and control V to paste it. We can delete this alpha map now and now we have transparency to, I don't know if this, uh, works. I have to try this out. No, it doesn't work. So we have to to make, yeah, and now I create another alpha channel. And now I can draw in some, maybe with, uh, with my spline here. My brushes here, I'd use here edges, make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I can draw him so a little bit worn, worn edges. Oh, of course, it's all sort of cool stuff here. Yeah, and now I've created here with a uh, vector painting right away. So it's a little bit, uh, maybe I can code this later to a script which always, also, uh, which loads the picture and also the interface maker in one tool so with one step so it works really quickly maybe i can code if i better coder then i would code the splines here right away in body paint but it would be possible maybe yeah of course so now if you've created this guy here and now when you have a look here it's right away on our Thing. So this is also very usable for yeah, vector painting some things if you don't have 
But if you don't need and want any vector painting tool. So this guys was it for me. You can download this tool from my website. I upload this things and you can use it. Yeah. Bye -bye. <laughs>